Come on, go to your bed. Here's your treat. Go to your bed. Mocha fo Mocha fossilized eucalyptus wide click. It's a little sample from Home Depot. Well, I might use it. It's hardwood flooring. Let's see it. Okay, so here's what happened. You see that? It makes a difference in the world. I won't pretend that I didn't fuck up. So I cut out a bamboo sample from a store that won't be named. But I won't be using the other ones because they kind of look like those jeans that you had to use in first grade when your parents were too poor and they kind of like rose to your ankle. Yeah, like really, they do. Like It would be like right there, like right at the rivet. No. That's some barely culotte kind of shit. I just use bamboo. It's a laminate bamboo. Comes from the same hole. And this ought to be fun. Two different materials. I could have also used um, acacia, but I don't want to push it. I want to use something that's a little bit more, you know, waterproof. This is a kitchen knife. Oh, fun fact. We're going to be using quarter inch brass not copper because copper kind of gives you cancer in the state of california at least okay whatever now we're going to use some crazy glue as you can see there's definitely a left and a right because i don't know if it's left or right well well that looks uneven as shit doesn't it it's kind of how you know so we're going to glue these together so they can stay together while we're drilling through them and then we might even crazy glue these to the handle while drilling. Just for shits and giggles. Is that right? I think it is. How do you do this? What the hell? It's the kind that you learn. Okay, instructions. What the hell? Muscle just. Okay. Let's see. Look at that. Huh? Oh, well, you look at that. Three little dots. You're not epoxying it together to the handle yet. Keep that together. Side. This one might be a little trickier because it's somewhat uneven ish. Wait, like this. There we go. But you put four dots instead of three. Yes, I did. Shut up. We all know that one person that comments like that. Off camera, I actually sanded the finish off these in the inside. They're, they still have this glossy coating in the inside. You might, well, no, you have to, correction. If not, the epoxy will not even adhere to it. I might, but you know, I just don't even want to risk it. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even know, I'll just leave that chill there for a second. Step would be to glue, crazy glue at least, the handle to the pieces of wood. 
on both and drill right through the middle holes with a quarter inch drill bit. I'm actually using a metric one because it's a snugger fit, if that makes sense. <sighs> No! So we got the little holes. The pins fit. Actually, I know just the rod fits, but I have to cut the pins out now. We have six pins cut out. I just cut them out of bar stock of brass. Um, once you cut them with an angle grinder, you need to kind of go to the belt grinder and um, chamfer them so they can go in there a little bit smoothly. And they're pretty snug because I use a metric bit. I think it's a number five metric, I'm not sure. But it correlates very well with quarter inch and it's pretty snug. So the epoxy ought to get pretty good results with that. Some people were asking me, how do you get the handles out with the crazy glue? Isn't that really strong? No. Like that. How do you get them from being stuck together? Well, kind of the same exact way. You put one to a ledge. My fancy little chaotic block of wood. This one's not that easy. My life. Uh, technical difficulties. Christ. Well, I, I didn't think that one through. Let's see. There we go. See? That's what happens when you put too much crazy glue. Or when you use Loctite, the gel kind. I say crazy glue for a fucking reason, too. Thankfully enough, this material is pretty, um, strong enough to support bang. Yeah, usually you want to do it against the edge of a table. There we go. Two scales, we got the pins. Let's clean up the blades, sand everything smooth. Let's do this. I clean everything with paint thinner. By paint thinner, I mean denatured alcohol. And by denatured alcohol, I mean denatured alcohol. Not NAFTA, not um, acetone. Um, I use denatured alcohol because it kind of doesn't give you tumors and makes you grow an extra arm if you use it. Plus, you don't need to use it with a mask, no health hazards, etc., etc. Wipe it down with the nature alcohol that applies to every surface that's being glued. Ah, oh, shit, I spilled oil. Oh, well. So, where are the, uh, the epoxy mark? Um, as you notice, I really do not protect my blades. Um, if you are skillful enough, you shouldn't really need to protect every little inch of steel that you play with. But it's mostly about protecting yourself. I'm using... Look at that. Log tight. Extra time. Not five minutes. Extra time. I'm not going to go into huge detail on epoxy, but I will say it hates oil and it's all about surface preparation. And by surface preparation, I mean pre preparation. <laughs> I mean, protect yourself too. Not condoms, but latex gloves. You will see me use latex gloves and sometimes I have to mess with the blade and mess with things and I don't use latex gloves yeah if you look up the studies um it broadly says it gives you cancer over exposure to epoxy if you're a knife maker you use a lot of epoxy you're being exposed do the math so these surfaces have been cleaned with denatured alcohol i think something like that yep they were yep there's a rag but just for fun and demonstration we'll do it again make sure Everything attaches it. Um, usually, I always preach against um, using old epoxy, but this is an old epoxy. It's epoxy I mixed um, a few days ago. And by a few days ago, I mean like yesterday. 
Uh, I only needed half of it because I made, on a previous video, if you have kept up with my video saga, uh, I made a simple knife um, where I would literally just drill a quarter inch hole into a piece of really nice burl. Don't ask me what kind it was. I don't. It's not like I go into the forest and I like, oh, this tree is that. It was a burl. Okay, okay. It makes like like they're like you're making blondies. I really forgot which scale belong, belongs to which one, but um, I will do my best. I will go and I will do. So let's start with the little baby. Man, this thing is sharp. I feel I feel that thing cutting through my glove. Let's just give it a nice little smother. I mix with the screw because I just didn't really have anything else to mix with. It's not rocket science. It's more like a smother the epoxy science. But make sure, like for heaven's sake, like make sure that you get the scales aligned properly. I think that's aligned. Yeah. That's what most knife making goes to hell. Well, and that's why you see every knife maker do the scales first. Because, yeah, I forgot about that. I'm more messy than anything. We're gonna get those pins in there, Jesus. Tight. Um, tap, tap, tap. Okay, hopefully it fits. Yeah, oh. That's the lead, like, level, apparently. Apparently one of the rivets isn't... It's gonna go in. No. Mm. Mein Kampf. <laughs> yeah, Hitler reference. My camera made a weird noise. Okay, I will be right back. There we go. Um, I got it in. Hopefully, hopefully I'm doing this right. As you see, I don't I don't build a lot of the full tang knives. I'm more like a stick tang guy. It's just because it looks pretty, but you know sometimes you need to go out of your comfort zone. Why is my dog crying? Okay. Jesus. gonna dip the tip um man it's like I'm middle aged I can't find the hole it should be do you see why I don't make these KY jelly for this? Man, this is horrible. There we go. Okay. Pro tip that um, you should have maybe found out on your own, but I'm being nice. Cut the pins a little shorter than the handle is needed. You grind off quite a bit of the handle, of the wood material. Not the actual steel. You don't grind off the steel. Kind of just make it flush. Yeah, but we'll find out that in a minute. Cut the pins a little bit shorter. Like, um, I'll go one eighth of an inch shorter. I should have done that, but since I'm not used to making these, um, I didn't. Oh, Jesus, here we go again.
to the vice. What a mess. Okay, so luckily enough, epoxy has this uh, amazing gap filling ability that pretty much allows you to um, fill gaps. So even if uh, this is most like a mostly a precise process, but especially with knives that are slap tang, it doesn't matter um, immensely. You have to be precise, but if you're like you know a billionth of an inch off, you know the gods will not like frown upon you and give you like horrible knife skills. Um, this is where I get all biblical, actually. In Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Thou shalt not have enough clamps in thine shop. That is true. You cannot have enough clamps in a shop. You don't want to squeeze every inch of epoxy out of these things. You want to just... Trying to make it look pretty, but it will not look pretty. Yeah, that's not looking pretty. Man, that looks like heart attack. Right there. Yeah, you can never have enough clamps. Like, that is not a thing. Clamps are used for literally everything. It's like an extra helping hand when you're making things. So, tip of the day, load up on clamps. It is the most versatile thing that you can do. Nice or are drying. We're gonna have a little throwback session. This mortar right here, well, you can't see shit, but you can see it looks like it. Okay. Better lighting, cinematic. This mortar right here is what I call my shop mortar. I got it when I was like, I swear, 13. And I made a handle for it at least 10 times. This is where I experimented with everything. You can see the most uneven ass grinds on this, but it's still sharp. I highly recommend mora blades. That's why I use them so much. Man, it even has blood on it. All these chips um i might make a new handle for it just just for health and polish it all out yeah story of the day 24 hours later knife looks dry you can't really tell if it dried well or not um next step would be just grind everything to the profile of the tang Ideally, you want to alternate between grinding the pins and grinding the wood because the pins overheat They're gonna burn the epoxy heat up the tank and the whole thing is screwed. Not really. That doesn't happen often um, So that's why you want to cut the pins at a decent size. Um, obviously, I didn't hear that. Hmm But let's go to can't tell because my camera is shit because I'm recording through a phone but um this is no sanding I have not well obviously bell grinder but I have not um polished them whatsoever and um with sandpaper because I actually had to stop the whole process due to my fucking base of the bell grinder catching fire yes these things the laminate was throwing this weird spark along with the steel that made it catch fire it was awful it was it was really eventful i had to open up i had to open up the cyclone it was just a big pain in the ass cheek but surprisingly enough the prettiest wood is the bamboo one the one that i was not going to use in the first place it looks a lot like those um banksia back banksia banksia those are the pods that uh pen makers use for their um pens and they fill them with resin this is exactly what it looks like once you grind down the side of them and everything and you can see a lot of figure a lot of shape i've seen a lot of bubbles that's why i'm just letting it there i'm probably gonna take some nice pictures and 
the videos and such and such of me picking them up and me playing with my dog. It's pretty nice. Um, but this is what they look like for now. So much epoxy got on the blade. I was talking about you don't need to cover it. Yeah, you need to cover it. Like so much epoxy got on it. It's insane. I had to like scrape it for like 20 minutes with a little razor blade and some alcohol, but it's all right. It's all right. And this one is really, 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 really pretty. I like this one the most. This one is all right, but this one's pretty. I'll record the video of the me picking them up in the grass with the plants and stuff.